All right, guys, this is Video for Charlie with another tutorial for you. This time we're going to be going over importing your media into Premiere using your media browser. So for the sake of simplicity, I've gone back to the default editing workspace. You can go ahead and do this from any workspace that you may be on. Uh, if you want to follow along, though, you can go ahead and click on editing. It'll just shift it over to this. But just be sure that you have your project panel available and your media browser available. Now, an important little tidbit is um, knowing the tilde key actually maximizes any panel that you have selected. I can go ahead and just select a panel, hit the key, and it maximizes it no matter where it is. You hit it again, and it minimizes it. Very, It's a very useful tool if you're just trying to navigate through things. You want to see something in more detail, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the media browser. And normally by default, it doesn't have anything selected. I've already started selecting things, so you'll see some folders pop up here. Now, essentially, in the media browser panel, you have your list of local drives and network drives, everything over here on the left. And then you have the actual folders themselves over here on the right. If I select any one of these hard drives, it shows you what's on that hard drive. And you can go ahead and navigate it just like you would any other finder or any other folder navigation window on your operating system. So you remember under this hard drive, we had created a project folder called VF Tutorials. I'm going to go ahead and double click that. We had created these folders, one for footage. Now we're going to go back to that folder. And I have placed some footage into that folder. Now you'll notice that they're all organized into folders already. This was done on a folder level in Finder. Now I highly recommend that you do this on all your projects. Never organize your footage in Premiere. Always organize it outside of Premiere in advance as best as you can and then bring it into Premiere so that way you don't unlink any media or cause yourself any headaches later on down the line. Now to import all this footage, all I would really have to do is just select it all by either dragging and highlighting everything or I can select the first one, shift, select the last one, and it'll just select all. Once it's highlighted, you right click and you select import. Now the files have been imported into your project. You see the project panel has been opened. If I bring that back to regular size, you'll see that all those folders have been imported and the footage within each corresponding folder is located in the project as well. Now these folders that you see here in this panel are actually called bins. Now the difference between folders and bins is really that bins is specific to Premiere. If you delete a bin, it doesn't delete the folder on a folder level or on the hard drive level. I could delete this aerial bin here. You'll see it's gone from Premiere. Now if I navigate to that same footage folder under VF Tutorials, footage, there's still the aerial folder with the two pieces of media still in there. So everything is non-destructive within Premiere when it comes to bins. Now you can also create sub bins within these bins to help you kind of organize the project better. Now what I like to do generally is create bins for the different kinds of media that I'm going to be bringing in or working with. To create a new bin, you can either go down to the bottom right here and select new bin. I'm going to name this one 01 sequences. Or I could use the hotkey, which is command B for bin. I'm going to name this 102 footage. Or I could even right click and do new bin. And I'm going to name this 103 MX. And I'm going to just do one last one, 04 GFX. So now I have a bin or I should say like a master bin for each of the different kinds of media that I'll be working with. Now, obviously footage, these pieces of stock footage, I'm gonna put into the footage bin. I can just go ahead and drag and drop them all into there using the same method as we did in the media browser. And now you'll see that it's collapsible. They're all within that particular bin. And you could do this with all the bins that you create to organize your project as best as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and re-import this aerial folder back into this footage bin. But I'm going to show you a different way of doing it. It's actually probably the easiest way to import footage. 
obviously you can go into media browser, you can navigate, find the footage and import, just like we do with this other footage. Or you can command tab, go to finder, find the piece of footage or the folder. And you can simply drag and drop that where you want in Premiere. And there it is. Everything's still intact. Everything is there. Now, like I'd mentioned before, you want to organize all the stuff in advance. You don't want to be doing it after the fact. Because let's say I had accidentally put the footage that's an aerial into the boats folder. Then I move that footage on a finder level. Like, let's say this is all gone now. I'm just going to delete it for the sake of example. You'll notice that that change has been notated in Premiere. Now Premiere has no footage to link to. I'm going to have to relink that footage in order to actually use it in any way. Otherwise, it'll just come up as offline. So you don't want to really be doing that. Although Premiere does make it very simple. You could just locate it by simply clicking locate and navigating to whichever particular folder it is located in and it'll just relink the media for you. Or let's say I put it back into the aerial fo folder by just simply doing undo. Now I can go ahead and locate it. If I go back to the exact same folder that it was in, there it is. Now, when locating footage, it's important to keep this check mark checked display only exact name matches. Otherwise, it's going to show you everything that's in that folder. Now, when you're dealing with a lot of footage, it's going to be next to impossible to manage all of that. So if you do this, it only shows you the one that is has the exact name matching. So that way you can go through all the folders, you can find the one, you click OK. Now, when you click OK, it's not going to only link that one piece of footage. Premiere's smart enough to actually know that that other unlinked piece of footage was in that folder as well. And now you'll notice that both of them are linked. Now, the next important thing to note is that you can also import projects into Premiere. Let's say that you're collaborating with other people in a group and somebody had edited a piece together and they want you to cut the sizzle reel for that particular piece. Instead of having to rebuild the project and redo everything that they did or have them have to export that cut that they did and you have to chop everything up, you can actually just import the project that they created by using the same methods that you use to import footage. Premiere makes it actually very easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the media browser, hit the tilde key to maximize, and I'm gonna to navigate to this folder on the same hard drive that I created called sample project. Now if I double click that, you'll see that there is a Premiere project in there. Just like the footage, it just pops up right here in Media Browser. And I can right click that and select Import. Now, instead of just importing it like it does with footage, it's gonna ask me a few things. It's gonna ask, do I wanna import the entire project or do I wanna import just selected sequences? In this particular example, I only had one sequence in that project, so I'm gonna import the entire project. It's also gonna ask, do I wanna create a folder for imported items? And also, do I wanna allow importing duplicate media? I'm going to say yes to both because there is duplicate media. And I do want to also create a separate folder because I want to keep my project completely separate from their project. So now if I click OK, it'll import a new folder with that project in it. You see that it has the stock footage as well as a sequence that was created in that project. If I go back to the regular size here, if I double click that sequence, it pops up with the actual raw sequence. So it's very helpful because I, now I can actually edit their project on a raw level. I don't have to redo any of the graphics. I don't have to redo anything. I can actually manipulate the graphics that they've created. So long as all of their media imports correctly, I can basically edit the exact project they were editing. Now shifting gears a little bit, just to get you a little more familiar with Media Browser. Let's go ahead and click on that, hit the tilde key to make it maximized. 
there's a few different tools that you can use to just kind of help filter through the massive amounts of footage that you may have in a project. Say you're working on a documentary or something, you're going to have tons and tons of footage. You're going to have to manage it all somehow. You may not even want to import all of it into the actual project. So Media Browser is going to become your best friend. So let's say I want to filter certain items. You can filter certain items that you're searching for by clicking on the funnel tool up here. Let's say I only want to show, I mean, for the sake of this example, MP4s, because all of them are MP4s. I can go to MPEG movie, and now it'll show all of these. Now I can select multiple things to filter, you know, JPEG files and so forth. So that way only these types of media will show up. In your case, where you'll be probably using multiple types of media, including image files and so forth, this will become very handy because you can choose to only pull up image files or you can pull up video files. You can pull up specific types of video, video files. You can also switch between icon view and list view. Right now we are in icon view or thumbnail view and you see the folders are very big. This is good if you want to go through your footage, browse, you know, single types of footage. So actually let me go ahead and change this back to all supported files. You can see that the thumbnail is there, but I could also scrub through the thumbnail. I can go back and forth and actually see what's on the clip before even importing the file. But let's say that I just want to see it in a list. I don't care what's actually, what the footage actually looks like right now. I just want to be able to select everything and start importing things. I can go down to here on the bottom left and select list view. You'll see that now it just puts it into a list. Now this is really handy if you're just trying to navigate folders. You don't want to have these big icons that have to go through. You can go ahead and just go through it like so. Now list view generally shows you more information than icon view. You can see that it has the file name. It also has a file path. So sometimes that can be helpful when you're just trying to navigate where footage is and how to organize it and so forth. When you're dealing with a lot of different kinds of media and lots of it, it's actually sometimes better to use list view than thumbnail view. Thumbnail view is more if you're just trying to look through specific footage, maybe only trying to import a segment of it as opposed to the full thing. It's a really handy tool, but generally I feel like it does eat up a little more power that could be better utilized towards actually editing your piece. So that pretty much concludes our tutorial on importing media and using the media browser in Premiere. Next, we're going to be going over how to organize your media within Premiere so you can finally get to what you actually want to do which is cut your piece. This is Video 4 Charlie signing off, and I'll see you next time.